Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Radical Muslims attack Coptic Christians, forcing churches to close in Egypt. Iran's top general threatens to shoot missiles at American air bases. And it's the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, honoring the Jewish right to Israel. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Muslims in Egypt have attacked Coptic Christians again, this time forcing many churches to close. Fox News reports that Egypt has been one of the worst places for Christian persecution in recent months. A series of attacks targeting Christians has forced the closure of churches and caused Egypt's Christian population to now call upon military authorities for assistance. The Minya Coptic Orthodox Diocese says that authorities have now sealed off two churches in the southern province, citing harassment and attacks by extremists. A third church was closed because of fear of attacks. The statement was issued last Saturday, and it said that Christ clashes broke out Friday when ultra-conservative Muslims tried to attack one of the churches adding that a Coptic woman was wounded. Later that day, the mob attacked Christian homes, the statement said, referring to the repeated closure of the churches, quote, we have kept quiet for two weeks, but the situation has worsened. It seems as if prayer is a crime the Copts are now being punished for, end quote. The Christian diocese urged authorities to end such discrimination against Christians and, quote, not to succumb to the fundamentalists, end quote. However, one observer reported that there were two attacks on houses of worship and that 15 people were arrested. He said that police are searching for 11 other suspects and that 21 churches in Minya are still open for Christian services. According to International Christian Concern, a separate clash broke out on October 27th when a Muslim mob formed in the village of Exbat. Following noontime prayer services, and they also attacked St. George's Church and other buildings owned by Christians. Security officials responded thereby closing the church. One Christian resident named Sobi, who happens to live in Esbat Zakaria, said in a statement to the International Christian Concern, which was later provided to Fox News, quote, following the Friday prayer, many Muslims gathered into a mob and began to attack us. They threw stones at our homes, resulting in breaking the doors and windows of some houses, injuring a Coptic woman. They set three stables owned by Copts on fire. Then they headed to the church and tried to attack it but the security guards who were assigned confronted them and prevented them from approaching the church." End quote. Egypt's Coptic Christians, who make up about 10% of the national population, have long been a target of Islamic extremists. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have many human actors. We have Christians who are trying to pray and go to Sunday services. We have Muslims who take up guns and try to persecute or throw rocks at the Christians. And then there's government officials who are receiving the appeals of both communities. But where are the non-human actors in this story? Where are the spirits? For example, where is the spirit of God and his angels? Where are the spirits of the devil and the demonic spirits? You can often tell by looking at the morality of the human actors involved and how they are influenced 
toward human sin or toward human holiness. So for example, when the Spirit of God speaks to both sides of these people, all the humans involved, and says, be at peace with each other, do not persecute each other, uh, in, in fact, specifically, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, even if you are persecuted, love your neighbor. And the Christians listen to that voice. They are listening to the Spirit of God, and you can tell by the manifestation of their love and peace toward their neighbor. However, on the other side, the demonic spirits of evil and Satan are whispering to perhaps both sides and saying, take up arms against each other kill each other, force your neighbors to stop worshiping. And the Muslims read in their holy book, the Quran, and say, well, that's, that sounds like the voice of Muhammad. No, that's the voice of Satan telling you to kill your neighbor, telling you to slay the infidel. The fact that Muhammad said it too only means that a Muhammad was listening to the devil. So my encouragement to you is resist evil, denounce and renounce the spirit of murder, and love your neighbor. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter five, Jesus had an opinion on this. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name for liberty and freedom and peace, especially throughout Egypt where anti-Christian persecution at the hands of demonic Muslim radicals is now reaching an all-time high. Father, we pray for the government to have wisdom to step in and keep the peace, and we pray for the Christians to be able to defend themselves. Father, let there be true religious freedom to worship Jesus Christ all throughout Egypt. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Iran's top general threatens to shoot missiles at American bases. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief. You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. 
I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. Iran's top general is now threatening to shoot missiles at United States bases in the Middle East. Fox News reports that following an announcement that Iran would cap the flight range of its ballistic missiles at about 1,200 miles, a top Iranian military commander said Tuesday that that's okay, 1,200 miles is long enough because that's easily enough for Iran to shoot missiles at all United States military bases in the region. General's name is Mohammed Ali Jafari, who is head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Added that Iran had the capability to expand its missile range beyond that limit, the Washington Free Beacon reported citing information from U.S. officials and regional reports. The range limit was reportedly set by Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. So now the great religious leader, the Ayatollah himself, is setting the range limit of their army's missiles? Interesting. The comments by Jafari appeared to be an effort by Iranian authorities to contrast their missile program which they often describe for being defensive purposes against those of countries like North Korea, which had talked about launching missiles that can hit any American city. And North Korea doesn't have any limit on the range of its missiles. Speaking on the sidelines of a conference in Tehran, Jafari told journalists that the capability of Iran's ballistic missiles was enough for the time being. Jafari also said that he didn't believe that the United States and Iran would go to war anytime soon, although some may question his reasoning. Referring to the United States, he said, quote, they know that if they begin a war between Iran and the United States, they will definitely be the main losers and their victory will be by no means guaranteed. Therefore, they, America, won't start a war, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. Uh, Really? (laughs) You think America would be the losers in a war with Iran? Mind you now, our technology has advanced 20 or 30 years since Gulf War I or Gulf War II when we wiped out Iraq at will. And I cannot imagine the United States initiating a war with Iran, but if if, if one came to be, I don't think we'd be in any danger of finishing that. Now, thankfully, the good news is here that Iran is limiting itself in in a sense that they are not threatening intercontinental ballistic missiles like North Korea is. Iran is not gonna launch their missiles into outer space, in which case they could reach around the world and land in Kansas. Iran is limiting their missiles to only 1,200 miles, but they're still threatening to be able to wipe out any Americans in the Middle East. And by the way, 1,200 miles, let's see, from Tehran, that's a circle, yeah, it pretty much includes all of Israel. So we do not want them to have nuclear weapons, that's the bottom line. Because as soon as the Ayatollah gets access to military weapons, he will not only set the limits, say, oh, well, it's no longer 1,200 miles, but he will also put those nuclear weapons on top of those missiles and reach perhaps all the way to Europe after destroying Israel. I mean, that's ultimately their goal, isn't it? We need to pray against that. But this reminds me of the scripture in Jesus said in Luke chapter 14. Uh, After he, Jesus was telling a parable about a man who was building a house and said, after he laid the foundation, but was not able to finish it All who see it began to mock him, saying this man was able to build and was not able to finish it. Be careful, General Muhammad, that when you threaten the United States, 
that you're able to finish on your threats. Otherwise, you will certainly be mocked around the world. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for peace in the Middle East. And we pray for a Christian revival throughout Iran that it would continue to grow and grow and grow until the Christians there outnumber the Muslim extremists. And the Ayatollah is defeated, not by any weapons of war, but by the truth of freedom and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for a true liberation in the nation of Iran. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's, break. Let's take another short break. When we come back, it's the 100th anniversary of the Belfort Declaration declaring Israel as a Jewish homeland. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, This book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. This book teaches 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional that will change your life and give you power. It comes with 15 inspiring true stories of political victory. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church, if you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99. Or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod, get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org, get this important Bible study series for you and your church, or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you, thank you for watching PIJN News and for donating to help us keep us on the air when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. Our last story today also comes from Fox News. It reports that it's the 100th anniversary of the Belfour Declaration, which honors the Jewish right to their homeland in Israel. The Belfort Declaration, for those who don't remember, expresses the recognition by the international community of inalienable rights of the Jewish people in their own ancient homeland, which is the land of Israel. The fact that current Palestinian leadership deny the use of the Belfort Declaration reflects their persistent refusal to recognize Israel as the homeland of the Jewish people and their desire to rewrite history. But besides the Jewish ties to the land dating back thousands of years to the time of Abraham, more recent attempts to, to undermine the 100 year old Balfour Declaration are tantamount to rejecting Israel's right to exist. On November 2nd, Israel, Britain and many others marked the 100th anniversary, the centennial of the so-called Balfour Declaration, which historically is a short letter written by the British Foreign Secretary around the year 1917, in which Britain officially recognized that the Jewish people's historical rights in the land of Israel are sovereign and significant. The declaration was closely coordinated by Britain with other great powers, and indeed, well represents the will of the international community at that time. 
For example, the Prime Minister David Lloyd George said in 1917 and later testified, quote, it is the Balfour Declaration was prepared after much consideration, not merely of its policy, but of its actual wording by the representatives of the allied and associated countries, including America, end quote. The specific text of that declaration was approved by American President Wilson, even before it was published, while the French and Italian governments also publicly endorsed it on February 4th and again on May 9th of 1918, respectively. Now this broad international endorsement, even before the United Nations came to be, of Jewish national self-determination was then formally ratified in 1922 on July 24th, when the League of Nations, the precursor to the United Nations, recognized the quote, historic connection of the Jewish people, end quote, to the land of Israel and appointed Great Britain as the mandatory power responsible for the establishment in Palestine of the national home for the Jewish people. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. So, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have various governments, right? We have the British government, we have the Italian government, the French government, we have Palestine, which it was referred to in the 1800s and was renamed effectively Israel when Israel became a nation in 1948. And that was solemnified by the United Nations. And yet in 1917, at the end of World War I, or right around the time of World War I, the League of Nations was forming in this idea that we should have peace in the Middle East had to respect the rights of the Jewish people who had been settling in there for hundreds of years before that. And those are just the human actors in the story. Where are the spirits in this story? I recognize the spirit of God upon the ambassador, uh, the, the foreign secretary, Balfour himself, because when he put his pen to paper, he was writing something in modern government declaration that agreed with the Spirit of God who wrote the same thing in the Bible in the Old Testament, beginning in the book of Genesis, when God spoke that promise to Abraham and said, I might have a covenant between me and your people and your descendants will, will be as numerous as the sand on the seashore, as numerous as the, the stars in the sky. When God wrote that in his word, and then Belfour later declared the same thing essentially in his letter, you can tell that the two authors are being influenced by the same Holy Spirit of God. And we're thankful for that. And we honor the memory of that official declaration. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 49. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises and to him whom the nations abhor, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, he has chosen you. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray for your chosen people the seed and descendants of Abraham, specifically through the lineage of Isaac and the 12 tribes of Israel. Father, we pray that you will continue to honor your covenant with them, which descends through King David and ultimately through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that as Christians today, we would honor the original root because we're just branches that were grafted in. But Father, in accordance with Romans 9, 10, and 11, we honor the original root, the people of Israel. And Father, we pray that you would continue to protect them and provide for them with peace and security in their homeland. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. Let's take a short break, and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit, or angels, or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now, we have an exciting 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99. Or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod. Get this 17-part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Get this important Bible study series for you and your church or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and may I ask you to please visit our website today, PrayInJesusName.org. When you go online, you can go to PrayInJesusName.org and do two things there. Number one, subscribe to our free email newsletters. There's a subscri subscribe button, doesn't cost you a thing, you'll get updates from our ministry. Number two, please click on the recurring donation button. And there's a process there to sign up, even just a dollar a month, you can give any amount, but we need your recurring donations to continue to bring you this program. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God, and the Bible says this in Matthew chapter six. When you do a charitable deed, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be done in secret and your Father who sees what you do in secret will himself reward you openly. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.